previously on Two Past Midnight. It's their turn, and there's only one dude left. He's going to open up. He's going to shoot at Murph. Roll cool and center fire, Murph, because I got nothing in a bullet die. He is suppressed. And that's one point of stress. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. That's two. He's going to have to. Oh, crap. So that means not only are you suppressed, you're incapacitated by stress now. Yeah, he's at his level again. A six is phobia. I'm going to say that's related to the crucifixes. Nine, on the other hand. Oof. Psychosis, empathy role in stressful situations. Failure triggers a violent rampage. We start back at the camp. It was nighttime before. Mm hmm. And, um, yeah, so we had basically gone through the evening and somebody was on watch. I was on watch. Yeah, because he drank the uh, fuel at the end of his. Yep, yeah, you were on keeping watch. You don't know that. All right. So what I'm going to need is a D6 roll for the morning weather. <laughs> That's right. I'm weather boy until I figure this out, correct? Y- yeah, you're the weather man until f- until for the Yes. Next. Yeah, baby. Oh, <laughs> six. Six. Yes. You're out of weather jail. Yes. <laughs> it starts <Redeemed>. to rain. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it finally had to happen to somebody. No <laughs> doubt. <laughs> Can't rain all the time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right. So it's sunny. So uh, the night goes on. It's been cloudy and cold all night. And um, the sun starts to come up and the clouds are starting to clear. And uh, it's morning. It's kind of a beautiful morning. Everyone heals one point of stress or damage and or. Everyone heals. <laughs> Except for me. That is muy bien. Actually, so not only that, not only does the sun come out and the clouds clear out, there's always been this thick gray that's different from, like, what you'd remembered before the war. Even on a clear day, there's just this haze, right, of, like, gray in the sky and um, you know that it's from the countless like nukes essentially and um, all of a sudden like that smog even starts to like clear and the sky looks fucking blue like not the same gray blue that you've known like blue and you all heal one point of stress. In addition? All the encounter cards are evil. Blah, blah, blah. Every single one of them. <laughs> In addition to... Where's the, the other side of this sword? <laughs> Somebody comes up and stabs me. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to be clear. That's... You all die of dysentery and Ox is dead. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to be clear. That's in addition to... Yes. The... Okay, You're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good for a man who went catatonic twice, so that, that was very well needed for Murph. So really, we get two of each? You get one point of stress from sleeping, yep. like healed, and uh, and you heal one, another additional point of stress. And even if you didn't sleep, you heal a point of stress. Gordon. It's all a dream and you get shivved by a Soviet. <laughs> Speaking of which, uh, you're working off a of sleep deprivation right now, so... We established that he would sleep this shift. Oh, okay. All right. In the morning one? It will, whilst we drive, he sleep. It's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful morning, gentlemen. Let's, uh, let's as you say, seize the day. Um, but before that, I'm going to pass out in the back of the truck. You sleep in back. We will just go when we are ready, yeah? Who's driving? 
honestly, I think Harrison is our best driver, so Stanislav is totally fine with giving Harrison the keys. Harrison, here, you you take keys I read to you while we drive, yeah? <sighs> Harrison, it would be uh, appreciated if you uh, didn't at least aim for the, the holes in the road. I didn't hit no hole. They, got, they shot us. They shot the tire. You only remember the end of the trip. Uh, there was uh, quite a ways before that. I'm just happy I get to drive Mr. Stan next to me. Mr. Stan, are you going to uh, take a look at this 240 before we take off in case somebody tries to get the drop on us a, a second time? You have other gun. Put other gun up there. I fixed that one in cab while we go. Yeah? So you're going to take the 240 in the cab? Yes. He's small area, but uh, his gun is not that big. Wait, let me make sure I'm understanding what you're going to do. You're going to fix the 240. Yep. <laughs> in the cab. Yep. Of a Toyota Hilux. Yep. While someone else is driving. Yep. And it, the gun's, quote, not that big. Yep. The 240. Yep. <laughs> not when it's in pieces. He will roll look, the window down. <laughs> look, what I'm saying is, you give me all the negatives you want. I understand that there will be negatives, but... <laughs> I just wanted to make sure I was, like, envisioning this properly. The, oh, yeah, the, yeah. No, no. The 240. Mechanic's going to do what mechanic's going to do. No, no, no. He's totally going to be, like, getting in Harrison's way. Of, yeah, like, the barrel and, like, yeah, the stock's yeah. going to be, like, bonking yeah. Harrison in the but, face But it's shit. only, like, to take the barrel off. He's going to, like, disassemble it. Right. Take the pieces right. with him uh -huh. and, like, work on the receiver and what he's got to while it's in pieces, while they're going. Yeah. Um, okay. All right. I just, I, in, I, in my head, I was envisioning a 240. Yep. Yep. And mm -hmm. then... It in the cab of a Toyota Highlands. Yep, yep. Oh, I no, I. <laughs> I'm, I'm not unaware of of the dimensions. That the we're the irony here. is not lost upon him. It's <laughs> like, a pretty big, like. Yeah, no, it's, it's fine. Fun. I take barrel off first, and then go in with receiver and fix spring. The only thing comparably ridiculous would be the 50 cal being like <laughs> worked on Look, you, in the front of the truck. No, as long as the barrel is off of it, you could work on it in the truck. That's fine. Okay. All I right. mean, it, it would be heavy and annoying. So it's going to be annoying. Like I said, give me all the negatives you want. It's fine. All right. No, that, that's, that's fine. Okay. So you're doing a tech roll in the front seat is what you're doing. Yes, sir. You're working on that. Okay. So... That means Harrison's driving, right? Yep. Okay. And who... So Harrison's navigating then? Oh, uh, Mr. Stanislav is... Uh, Mr. Jankowski is not a great navigator. This is not the thing he's good at. Okay. And then who's on watch? Because Gordon is sleeping, right? I am either resting or sleeping, whatever you will give me in the back of a vehicle. Well, here's the thing. If you don't sleep, you're going to start going to an actual sleep deprivation no matter how much you've, quote, rested. My plan is to sleep. If you, I just okay. didn't know if you were just like, ha ha, you get just rest. Ha ha. <laughs> no sleep for you. Too bright and sunny. <laughs> <laughs> Truck too bouncy. <laughs> it's too pretty to sleep. <laughs> That's the other side of it. <laughs> it's too pretty to sleep. It's too beautiful. I can't sleep. I can't sleep. It's such a beautiful day. <laughs> All right. So, so who's on watch then? Uh, we still got Emmett? Murph. Emmett. Emmett's on on watch. Murph can be on watch. Doesn't Emmett need to sleep? Or did he sleep last night? No, Emmett slept in in that last shift. <laughs> we just have to pray that the watch goes well for Murph. Yeah. Well, I was gonna say like. If he's not on watch, and you guys have noticed, he is definitely extremely quiet and just staring straight ahead the whole time. So if you want him to be on watch, he will, but he'll just acknowledge it with a grunt. Even with the stress, I think he's still our best chance at, at recon for that. 
Well, he's also taken the negatives for. I was going to say, we got a blown off nose for negatives for somebody. And the eye. Yeah. The, yeah. the eye. Oh, did we? Oh, shit. Yeah. We forgot to do that last game, if I remember correctly. Yeah. He, Murph's going to take a negative one for his recon because of the eye. He'll get a plus two from the binoculars and then a negative two because you're in a vehicle. It's a negative one total. Yep. Um, how long was the eye supposed to last? I thought it was f- three days, five days, five days? A few days. I rolled and never told you. <laughs> it's a secret. But we're, we're 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 getting there. It's a few days. Same with uh, Harrison's nose. A few days. But um. So yeah. So you guys start getting the truck around. You you guys are starting to get it loaded up. And um, the woman that you had pulled off of the cross starts to come to, and starts to regain consciousness. Where? Where? Where am I? What? Who? Who are you? Calm down. Calm down. I am. I am. Uh, Stanislaw Jankowski. We found you on a cross. We brought you down. Um, we, where's? We are heading to Krakow. Where? Where's the rest of my platoon? Uh, if I had to guess, little lady, I would say probably the that was the rest of the people on the crosses beside you. Don't refer to me as little lady. I'm. I'm sorry, ma'am. There, there were no others living. It's only you. Shit. Shit. Where, where are they? Where? How far? How far from there are we? I can't feel my legs. Yes, you. You have taken injury to back. You, <sighs> you have to rest. You should stay. Here, we will take you to Krakow with us. Krakow, where? We, we, were any, we were near Lublin. Lublin? We came through Lublin. Is We went around, and there is... Lublin is not where you want to be. That's, that's where the rest of my platoon is. How many did you see? There were many. I am sorry. <sighs> okay. We will care for you and take you to Krakow with us. There is free city there, is what they say. And you can rest up. We will help you. And and once you decide you're on your feet, you can go wherever you please. But until that, uh, I, I'm sorry to say we cannot leave you here. And we cannot go back for your people. They are, they are only bones now. Well, it's nice to meet you, Mr. Jankowski. Um, what is your name? Major Gibson. Major Gibson. It's nice to meet you. I wish we're under better circumstances. And she kind of looks around, and she looks at Emmett, too, and she's like, you're, you're an American? Uh, y- yes, ma'am. Uh, what, about, what about the rest of the people with you? We have a Canadian and three Americans. All army? Yes, ma'am. I do not... Go down, are you army? I, uh, I, I was stuck with army, but uh, yes, I believe that is uh, correct. Mostly, again, translation, not military. It's kind of a but yes, Canadian Army. What what units were you with? And she's looking at the the Americans. Ma'am, I, I was with Second Armored. Okay, um, Captain, what uh unit were you with? Uh, I was with the Twenty Fifth Infantry Division. Twenty Twenty Fifth. Out of wait, just this is double checking referee. That's the one out of Hawaii, right? Correct. 25th. When? Did they have any of those boys over here? Uh, I was I was sent on special assignment. Okay, I was about to say, I don't remember any of the 25th coming over. It's weird. No, my, okay. my unit was not deployed. Uh, just, just me, ma'am. Okay. Okay. And, uh, what about the rest of your men? 
rest of her men, you, you mean Murph here? Yes, I'm... Um, yes. Murph, hey. What? Who, who, who was you with? Fifth Special Forces Group. Okay. All right. Wow, that's a weird comment. How did you all end up... How'd you all end up together? Uh, kind of like you ended up with us, ma'am. I guess that's a fair point. Me and Murph, we were... We were in a POW together, and then... Uh, Harrison tried to steal our vehicle, and... <laughs> At that, she like that, looks over at Harrison. <laughs> that 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 ain't exactly true, but you it, mean this truck, Harrison? Did you try to steal their vehicle? Well, Miss m- Stan, not not exactly. I, I, Harrison, you know stealing is wrong, huh? I I I, I know. We we we've been through this numerous times. <laughs> not <laughs> not with you, but. I, I was just going along with my my tank buddy who who was trying to get us to that boat going home. So while Harrison's talking, she's like, uh, Captain, what? Peterson. Everybody just calls me Emmett. Well, they all just call you Emmett. Yeah, it's kind of laxed, but okay. Well, it, it seems like times kind of call for lax. It's more about trying to get these men home and survive than it is about the the rah-rah rhetoric at this point. No, I understand. I understand. You're looking out for morale at that point. Um, what, what's your... What's your objective? You're headed to Krakow? Yeah. What's... Why? Uh, well, we started picking up a radio signal uh, that said that there was... Uh, I mean, basically, we, we got word that there is somewhat of a civilization left there. Other than that, we don't actually have any other, I mean, primary destination. Uh, we're looking for 2nd Armored Division or what's left of it. We've come across a couple different patches of 2nd Armored Division that's been blown to blown to crap. But we caught word that there was a, uh, a tank headed south from the, from the river. And so we've been uh, trying to trail it and... At this point, we're headed to crack out to see if anybody's maybe seen any of the remnants of 2nd Armor Division. They were supposed to be headed to Parju, but uh, Parju is fully infested, so we, we, we made contact with Parju, lost a man, and had to pull out. So we then took the next lead that we got, which was a tank headed southbound. Ma'am. Okay. I was with 5th Infantry, and... Um... We were supposed to meet up with a group in uh, in Parshu. Some of us were detached out. Um, Second Armored Division, and I guess uh, so. They're, I guess they're all over the place then too, huh? Because Fifth Infantry's been the same way. We got um, beaten down in Kalish, and just kind of spread to the winds. Does Murph hear this conversation going on? Yes. Ma'am, there's no organization. There's no rhyme or reason. There's no structure. Rank doesn't mean a fucking thing. All we're trying to do is survive. For once, me and the sniper agree. I understand that. Murph, is that correct? Yes. But you, you do realize that the breakdown of structure comes from individuals, right? And how they behave. <laughs> he turns and walks away. Got some group here, Captain. And I understand where it's all coming from. This whole thing's a fucking shit show. It's honestly just the, the group that God gave me, Major. Yeah. He has... <laughs> Good sense of humor, no? Sure does. Uh, I guess, unless I'm planning on low crawling it uh, anywhere else, I guess I'm tagging along with you boys. You have no option. You stay in bed of truck. That's my point exactly. We will get you on your feet again, and then you go same as everyone else, wherever you wish. 
Well, I'll make you the same promise I've made these men and everybody else that we we've linked up with. Everybody else that has died. And that's I will try and keep you alive as long as I can. Would you like to be my buddy? <laughs> <laughs> Talk about my best friend. <laughs> Captain, I do not think that would be appropriate. Technically, it's not fraternizing because she's a major. He's a captain. I They're I only know. like one step. Of course, they'd be hanging out. I'm not saying he's not really a captain. <laughs> Shh. <laughs> like, I, like the only person that knows that now is Murph. Murph. <laughs> he's the only one. It's literally in the just entire Murph. and and the rest of the world. Murph is the only one. Jacob. <laughs> Jacob will be surprised. I don't even know if Jacob would actually know what big he was. <laughs> that's a good point. That's a good point. That's that's an interesting point. Yeah. He probably wouldn't even care. I mean, I'd I had heard some things about Krakow before. I've, all I've know about it is that pretty much they declared themselves a free state early on in the war, and um, just kind of sitting back and staying out of the whole thing. I heard tales from people that had gone down near there that there's an attack helicopter that they've seen flying over the city. If, like when they've gotten close, uh, that like lands inside a castle inside the center of the city. So, I mean, other than that, that's that's all I mostly know about it. But I've heard the same kind of things you guys have heard that um, you know, it's kind of been set up as a place for refugees to go. So. And they got the radio station, too. Oh, yeah, the classic rock they keep playing, right? I think I heard them playing Queen not too long ago. That sounds about right. Yeah, about the only two things we've been able to get to, to come in on the radio is, well, I guess three, is Static, the the Krakow radio, classic rock, and... uh some religious nut that said he was trying to get a group together for the end of the world. Shepherd's flock. What do you know about that? They're run by some man named uh, Adelbert, I believe is his name, something along those lines. He uh, likens himself to be some sort of prophet. They're, they're basic objective is to quote cleanse the land of outsiders so Uh, are they the ones that burned your people yeah that's that's right that's them I've only heard tales of this Adelbert guy but I haven't I mean he wasn't there it was just other people of his they sound like type to throw gasoline on house fire. They do. I mean, their objective, if that's what you want to call it, is to expedite Armageddon. It seems like we're doing a good enough job of that all on our own once he's heavy. Yeah. I, I don't really know what that word means, but it doesn't sound good. You know how you pulled the uh, the thing off that uh, battery thing, like real quick, you expedited that explosion. That's what that means, Harrison. I I, I meant that Armageddon, Armageddon word, but you, you mean to tell me your Bible preaching mama ain't never brought up Armageddon to you? He's a revelations. I I just knew it was bad. Uh, why why you gotta keep bringing up that stupid radio or speaker? I still have dirt stuck in my ear, Harrison. (laughs) It is embedded in the side of my face. It's only been four days. (laughs) It feels like ancient history. And you live, so let's just leave that in the past. It feels like it's been four months. (laughs) (laughs) All right, well, gentlemen... You know, I guess we're kind of summarizing up the conversation, and uh, you guys are getting the truck loaded, and yeah. So your guys' plan is to continue southwest, is that correct? 
Yep, basically following that road and that river headed towards crack off. And I get to drive again. I'm asleep. Yeah, and I mean, you guys are currently, like, if you look at the map, you're currently 110 kilometers from Krakow as the crow flies. We should be able to make it very close to Krakow within six hours, maybe a couple kilometers away if we are lucky. We ain't had much of that, Miss Stan. Lucky's funny thing. Okay. All right, so driving is Harrison. Front seat is... Stanislav. Mr. Jankowski taking the 240 apart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Emmett is on the pencil with the saw, I guess, the 249. Yep, Psalms would be up on the back. And Murph is keeping watch. And Harrison is navigating himself while he's driving because he can do that because that's reasonable and he doesn't need to anyway because you're you're following a road so yes all of the above <laughs> I might look at the map upside down but that's alright I just follow the road okay alright did you did you want to do a bulk rolls yeah I was kind of thinking about that um Yes, let's do bulk rolls of it. So what I'm going to need from everybody is... I don't know if I want to do... If I want to go too fucking crazy on it. Um, If you want, we could do one by one. It's up to you. No, no. I mean, it should just be... Everybody rolls one. So driving roll-wise, you're going to get a plus three, Harrison. So what does that put you at for driving? That's going to get me an A and an A. All right. So roll 11 quick driving rolls. And then, unfortunately, Murph, too, will have to roll recon. So I'll roll those for you off your sheet for him while you're doing that. Because it'll be the same roll anyway. Two successes on the first one. Just roll 11. <laughs> just roll them. Don't, you don't have to call them out. Just roll 11 of them. Call out if there's a fail. God damn, Dale. You're kicking ass. I think that's 11. You Yeah, you got 11. I counted them. You, you got 11. You got 11 with all successes. Harrison. Yeah. Two, and a bunch of doubles and triples. Two successes, yeah. two successes, four successes, one success, two success, two success. Uh, two, two, one, two. Oh, no, one, two. Yeah. Harrison drove the shit out of that truck. <laughs> I, I just day, he just, road. he just opened her up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like doing the bulk rolls better. I think that was better. Um... Murph got two fails two different times. The rest of them success. Alright, so Murphy. As you guys are going along you get about 40 kilometers and you see a up the road a little ways you see 12 Soviet soldiers patrolling up ahead from the vehicle you can kind of like you come up over top a little rise and you can kind of see them off in the distance through your binoculars Harrison stop Harrison jacks on the brakes I, I stop I stop what 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 you see damn it we got about 12 Russian soldiers down there I can see him through the binox you kind of see them like patrolling, like, and they just doesn't. They don't appear to have spotted you yet. Looks like they're on like a just a coordinated search check. Looks like they're kind of staying close to a certain area. Yeah, they're doing a security sweep. They're patrolling along the side of the road, basically. 
Well, if they ain't noticed us yet, I'd say let's let's maybe take the long way around. Stanislav, you think you can you can help uh, young blood up there navigate out around this? Do you want gun to work or do you want him to get around? I just mean, do you know another road that gets out away from this main road? Looks like we got some heavy hostiles up there. I'm. I have been to Krakow maybe twice. Is 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 farther than I'm. I normally go. I'm not very familiar. I normally take highway. All right. Well, looks like we're gonna have to just kind of go off map here. Huh. Harrison, we're gonna have to detour. We got we got about twelve hostels up there. We're gonna need to divvy out and around. You think you can get us out around this? I, I do my best, like I always do. I, I assume I, I assume we're gonna go north and then head southwest, so we can just give them a wide berth. Sounds like a plan to me. Take it nice and slow. Let's not draw attention to ourselves. So you're going to have to roll a survival roll and to not get lost while detouring and a recon roll. And you're going to lose a hex of movement. So this will ultimately count as five. Any pluses or minuses? Uh, Same negatives he would get for recon. So minus three. And yeah. That, uh... <laughs> At a minus three, that is a D6. I mean, you're in a vehicle, so. And you could push the roll. Um, yeah, he failed. You can push it. He rolled a four. Yeah, he can still push it. You can push it. Uh, oops, yeah. Failed that one, too. Okay. Closer, though. Yep. <laughs> All right. Roll me a survival roll. To make sure you don't that's get lost. What, that's what you just had me roll. No, that, no, was, that recon. was recon. Oh, I rolled survival because that's what you said first. So. Oh, still same. Okay, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so roll the survival without that negative three. This is also a pushable roll. Come on, Dale. All right, we'll push this one, too. Nope. So two points of stress, right? No, no you, you only get the stress ones. from an actual one. Oh, one. Yep. Uh, so he should not have had any stress from either one of those push rolls. Okay. Yeah, the only thing that you would get stress from is that. All right, so he gets lost. Right. So... Let me pull that up. Um. So describe what this looks like then, Chris. Well, I, I pulled off the road and tried to go north and give them a wide berth and, and go go around the long way. But um, I, I kind of got disoriented because I don't really have compass or nothing. And uh, I ended up going, like, northeast, so backtracking, and then made a left. So then I'm probably just going north now. I, I, I tried to look at the sun, and obviously I don't know where the hell I'm going. Stanislav looks up periodically as he's working on the, the receiver, and he's like, He's tree there. You should turn left the tree. And he puts his head back down and <laughs> starts messing with the 240 again. That not really helpful, Mr. Stan. Well, he's, he's helpful. Do not hit tree. His truck, you know, he's... If you hit tree with truck, I have to fix again. Yeah? Drive straight. Yep, that's what I was thinking, because see where the sun is? So I, I think in a little bit I need to take a left, and, and then we, we should be heading in the general right direction, I think. All roads lead to Krakow, huh? I sure do hope so. All right. 
So you realize that you've yeah gone northeast. Like, yeah. So you have to make another survival roll to unlose yourself. How much extra fuel did that cost? Getting lost? Uh, uh, one. Well, that was one, two, three, four, five hexes worth of fuel. Oh, okay. I counted it right. Cool. Cool, cool. Yeah. Good. I got a success, so I, I found my way. Yeah, you basically ended up doubling back and, you know, realized you were like, oh, shit, there's, <laughs> I've seen this before. We're just going the wrong direction now. It's just deja vu. I didn't get lost, boys. Oh, I'm sorry, six. Uh, yes, because getting lost after it was six, so it should be six hexes. Yep. Okay. Because there's an extra one to back off, and then another one for being lost. So gotcha. six hexes worth of travel. Also for time. So that means, what's the travel speed on this? Nine. Yeah, that's been like two-thirds of the shift then, also. Mm-hmm. So. Like, you guys were driving around for couple hours <laughs> just now lost <laughs> he's better than being shot Mr. Emmett did say to make sure I stayed clear of them so I I, I just you know gave them a real wide berth oh, what did I miss uh, are we there yet no no we uh we had to make a bit of a detour. We had some some hostels up in the road ahead. Luckily, oh. Murph here was able to spot them out. Excellent. Why does it seem that there's always hostels in the way? It seems like there's only hostels anymore. <laughs> this much is true. Find my way. I just want to try to shoot them. And how many hostels uh, were there? Uh, looked about, what did you say, Murph 12? Round a dozen or so. <laughs> okay, these odds I do not like. <laughs> I'm glad we did not choose to fight. Could have just stayed here, reach out and touch him. Alright, so you guys are back 10 kilometers from where you th- originally were. Uh, what is your plan now? About three, two-thirds of the way through the shift. I mean, we're just trying to push on to, to Krakow. Okay. So you're going to keep going then? I'm going to keep driving and driving. Murph, why don't you give me a recon roll at a negative three? Negative three? Yep. Two, four, vehicle... Oh, but you get a plus two for the binoculars. Should be minus one total. So minus one. This one is not a pushable roll because it is passive. One success. Okay. So what does it look like you guys going down the road? You guys describe it to me. Emmett, your first step. Uh, For Emmett, this is the, the first time in a long time being... Being over here, it, it's it's felt a little bit almost like home with the, the the day being so nice and the weather being warm. Being up in the the back of a open vehicle, driving, wind in his hair, it, it kind of reminds him of uh, cruising around the island on his in his Jeep Wrangler with the doors off. Uh, him and his wife and Keanu cruising around, it, it almost just gives him kind of a, a warm fuzzy feeling. But at the same time, he's just kind of wondering if we're going to be able to find Keanu or not. And if we're going to be able to get to, to crack off. And hopefully, hopefully that's where 2nd Arbor Division ended up doubling back to once Parju was a total waste. Harrison, you see this spring here? No, don't look. You keep driving, all right? But this spring here, right, is bad part. I know this is American design, but it's bad part. They sh- they should not hire lowest bidder. Lowest bidder gives you lowest quality, yeah? So, I take one of these from AK, also low quality, yeah? But I make work. I, I thread springs together, yeah? 
give extra extra pressure on there. But don't don't look. You keep eyes on the road. We'll fall off the road and end up in the ditch. I I, I won't look over. And when when it comes to anything mechanical like, I, I definitely trust your judgment. You know more than those dumbasses who made them. Ah, you know, see, I, if they ask me, I could improve for less money. Yep. Yeah? I'm sure you could. Do you know? By, wait, wait, by, by, by the way, I, I, I won't want to talk to you about something. What is it, Harrison? The, the, disregard that whole stealing the Jeep or the Humvee. I, I just went along with, with who I thought was my friend. And we were just trying to go home. I, I, I didn't know he was doing something so bad. I, I, I just wanted to go home. But pl- please just judge me on what I've done since you met me. It is not my place to judge you, Harrison. And besides, to tell you a secret, I steal chainsaw motor one time. Well, I welded two bicycle. <laughs> we... Uh, we all do some things that we're not proud of, but I always try to do the right thing. You are making up for it now. Huh. I hope so. Thank you, Miss Stan. Yeah, you thought you were doing the right thing at the time, but it's uh, difficult times, yeah? It's hard to know right and wrong. And, um... All we can do is our best, right? Yes, Miss Stan. I, I just feel like everything's wrong here. No matter what I do, it's wrong. No, you are doing fine, Harrison. You drive good. You're you're a good driver, right? I trust you. Do you think I would entrust my truck to anyone else? Hmm? And I like driving. <laughs> It's good. I like riding, honestly. I do not like driving. It's, it's too much work. Much more fun than just sitting there waiting for something to happen. Mm. This is why I keep busy. Gordon? Sleeping? Oh yeah, Gordon sleeping. <laughs> Murph? Murph is just standing up looking through the binoculars, holding them in one hand with one hand keeping his balance so he doesn't lose his footing. And does not say a fucking word and has absolute, like, hate in his eyes where he he almost hopes he sees enemy. He's still kind of, like, wishing that we had engaged the the Russians that were there. He wants to kill. And he's just got that that hard no fucks to give attitude right now. He's just pissed. Mm. So you get to that rise where you had like first came over a little bit and saw them off in the distance patrolling. You get to that point. You don't see them there anymore. Um, you go along a little bit further. And you get past this grove of trees and like just past the grove of trees, like off in the distance, you can see these like rising up out of the grass that's there. You can see like a low hill, right? That you couldn't quite see before just because of the way the the terrain was. But you see these like giant crucifixes that are out there and they they're kind of reflecting some light a little bit, but they also have like this reddish kind of like rusted color to them and you can tell that they're they're made out of metal right they're not made out of wood they look like they've been fashioned out of metal like you can and the more you look at it you can kind of tell that like the upright beam is like a barrel of a tank you know and like some of the cross beams are like other pieces but it looks like it's actually been welded together these big crosses it doesn't look like haphazardly done right like it it seems to have like a bizarrely aesthetically pleasing quality to it like it seems like it was done artistically like on top of this hill like it wasn't just like strewn up their crosses it's like something about the way that they're placed seems you know geometrically appropriate but it's made out of like 
refuse of war, pieces of blown up tanks and like machines of war. Murph lets go of the binoculars so that they just dangle around his neck and drops down into the bed of the truck and puts his head in his hands. More crosses. No more. No more crosses. No more crosses. Oh, shit. Um, Those are his trigger. Dude, you didn't know? <laughs> dude, like, I thought that's what that was part of. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> um, it's within... It's within... It, it's in the same hex? I don't know if this... Uh, it's within the same hex. It's within the same hex. So you're, you're not within the same hex, so it's not that. <laughs> it's not the trigger. Um, you could roleplay it however you want. Yeah, we could say he's not yeah. like losing because this one's a fear one, right? Uh, it's the phobia. It's the yeah, phobia. Yeah. So. yeah, but okay. You say that, but here's the thing: the the way that this works is anytime you're in a stressful situation, you might. So the phobia could potentially set off the other thing. What right, I'm saying is, could, yeah. It yeah. could trigger it. Right. But we're not within the same hex, so it's not technically... You don't. You wouldn't have to roll coolness under fire for it. So since you don't have to roll coolness under fire for it, I'm not going to count it as a, quote, rules as written, stressful situation. Does that make sense? Yeah, because it's not in the same hex, I can soft play it. Like, that's what I... That's right. kind of what I was doing, right? Where he he lets go of the binoculars and just drops down into the bed of the truck and holding his head in his hands, and he's like, "Fucking crosses, no more crosses, these fucking crosses." I hate this place. Fucking hate this place. So, as Murph is doing that, Harrison, you come around the turn, another turn around this another little grove of trees, and right in front of you, and this is perfect timing because you did okay on your recon roll, but not well enough. You see a group of a bunch of people, and they all have their guns pointed out, and you see that one of them has an RPG pointed right at the truck. One of the guys with the rifles, like AK-74, because shoots up in the air. And we're gonna cut away. Cut away to what? Hold on. <laughs> You're horrible. That's a perfect time to cut away. All right, give me a second. This is awesome. Cut away, and we see Lieutenant Kim and Keanu and Anderson and uh, Kim, Keanu, Anderson, Butler. Butler. There we go. I was like, I'm forgetting. Which one did I miss? Butler. And we see them, and they're all hunkered down behind these concrete walls. Right, so we heard that gunshot go off as we cut over. Kaka! And we hear, blah, 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 blah. And we see them hunkered down behind these walls and like these little low like barriers and rounds are going off and like ping, 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 ping. And you guys are taking incoming. And basically where you're at is you're in an area of a bunch of debris. And the shots that you were taking are from about 60 to 70 meters ahead of you. There's these buildings that shots are coming from. There's two different sets of buildings, multiple targets. They're pinned down. Butler, what do you do? We're doing theater of the mind on this. Sir, we're going to stay here undercover. We're taking heavy incoming. We need to get out of here. If we stay pinned down underneath these blocks, they're going to kill us for sure. We got to lay down some suppressing fire so we can move and shoot. To give you guys an indication, um, uh, so like from left to right, basically, Keanu's on the far left. Next one to the to the right of him is Lieutenant Kim. Then it's Butler and Anderson. Anderson, Butler, Keanu, and I are going to lay down suppressing fire. You move over to that next building. Oh, sir. Rise and sign, son. <laughs> Rise and shine, <laughs> son. <laughs> <laughs> Lay down some fire, Keanu. And Lieutenant Kim takes partial cover and starts shooting at the buildings to lay down suppressing fire for Butler and Anderson. All right, so you guys start to head that way. Keanu and Lieutenant Kim start to pop up to take shots 
to provide uh, cover fire. As they do, as Anderson and Butler start to head to the right, rounds start going off behind them and like, pee, 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 pee. Like, all right, but Anderson, you make it over to the building. Butler, you make it almost there. You're not quite there. Uh, you're about halfway, Butler, just to let you know. Yeah, as he runs and then dives behind some rubble and then gets up and runs to the building. All right, so you start going across, and yet again, like, we see rounds just hitting, like, right behind his feet. Um, Keanu. Uh, yeah, yeah, I would, I would pop up and, uh, take shots at the, the, uh, south side of the, the main building there. Okay. Yeah, so we see those rounds hitting the side of the building. You see a guy pop up, like he low crawled up to that position, and you see him just toss a grenade into your hex. Where you and Keanu are. Oh shit. Keanu, run! And Lieutenant Kim dives on the grenade. We hear. 